All right, today we're going to talk about two Fujifilm lenses, the 16 to 55 and the 18 to 55. Stay tuned and we'll talk about it. All right, hello and welcome back everyone. Eric Marks here, FindingMiddleEarth.com. And today we're gonna to talk about a very common question, uh, so I hear, in the Fuji community, which is the debate between which lens to go with. The 16 to 55 2.8, which is weather sealed and has a constant aperture, or the 18 to 55, uh, which you can get as a kit lens. And this one is a 2.8 to f4 which is a variable aperture, but it's still a very good variable aperture. Uh, most kit lenses are like 3.5 to 5.6. Uh, okay, so let's talk about it. First off, what was, what was my journey with these lenses? So I, when I first got into the Fuji system, okay, it's been over a month now. I got the X-T2 with a few lenses. I got the 16 to 55, the 35 F2, and the 56 1.2. Just those three lenses at first, okay? I was still feeling out which wide angle lens I wanted and which zoom and which telephoto, which by the way, I've ordered all my Fuji lenses now. Uh, everything has come uh, over the next, or, or over the last couple of days and my last lens comes tomorrow. So I'm gonna be doing kind of a Fuji what's in my bag video soon because uh, as of tomorrow, I'll have six Fujinon lenses. Uh, it's kind of an addiction buying these Fuji lenses because once you finally decide on one, you realize that Fuji doesn't really make a bad lens. Um, okay, so let's get back to the topic here. So what are some pros and cons of these two lenses? So the first thing is obviously people want optical quality, right? They're thinking, what's the best optical quality I'm going to get out of the lens? Well, this 16 to 55 retails for $1,200 US and it's a constant 2.8 aperture and it's weather sealed. So you would think the obvious choice would be to go with this lens because it's more expensive. It's got a you know, couple of features that look better. And um, you know, it's just because it's weather sealed and uh, you know, a little heavier, people just think it's a bigger, better lens. Um, I know from experience that the price of a lens and that the way it looks isn't you know, necessarily how it's going to perform. Uh, things are never that way really in photography uh, because if that were true then the Fuji X-T2 wouldn't perform well because it's a you know tiny little camera without the battery grip on it um, okay so I did not go with the 18 to 55 at first okay because I have a Nikon uh, I have the Nikkor 24 to 70 2.8 which is basically the equivalent right of this because this is a 16 to 55 2.8 and so this is basically like my Nikkor that I've had for a long time um, but in low light situations with my Nikkor, I almost always just pop on a speed light because, you know, it doesn't have VR. I don't have the VR version of the 24 to 70 Nikkor. Uh, not that I really wanted it because it's over $2,000 and I don't really use VR that often. Plus I find that Nikon VR isn't that great. It's good, but it's not great. Um, so I'm going to Disney World, as a lot of you know. I'm leaving this weekend. So today is, what is today? <laughs> Today's Thursday. Um, today's Thursday and I'm leaving this weekend, okay? And so I have a couple of days to try to figure out what all I'm gonna take to Disney World and what my like day bag kit is going to be. Now this is my 10 month old daughter's first trip to Disney. Uh, it's our first trip as a family with her. You know, me and my wife have been a million times. And so I'm trying to, you know, think ahead, like what's gonna be the easiest, lightest, you know, best kit to take. Disney has a lot of low light situations. A lot of the restaurants are low light, obviously at nighttime in Disney, which is when a lot of the cool activities happen, it's low light. And so uh, VR and optical image stabilization, all those things can be important. So I think the biggest deciding point for me when I was trying to decide between the 16 to 55 and the 18 to 55, the, the biggest deciding point was, do I need optical image stabilization, which this one has, or do, you know, can I live without it? Because this one doesn't have weather sealing, this one does, but this one does have optical image stabilization and this one doesn't. So they both have these like pros and cons. And so what did, what did I do? The obvious choice. I got both of them <laughs> because I think, uh, even though it, it sounds kind of crazy to own a 16 to 55 and an 18 to 55, they both kind of come in handy in different situations. Um, so first let's talk about portability, okay? The obvious. I mean, look, this thing is very heavy. When I first put the 16 to 55 2.8 on my Fuji X-T2, uh, this lens is what made me order the battery grip, okay? Because when I put it on the X-T2, I mounted it up and I picked the, the X-T2 up and the whole thing just, it was like, whoa, holy 
crap. It just like, I mean, it's just so front heavy. It felt like I was gonna snap the mount off of the camera. Uh, but with the battery grip on here, you know, it's perfect. It, the, the weight is very even and it's great. Um, but at the same time, I kind of bought the Fuji stuff to, you know, be a little more under the radar and not look as professional and, you know, just to get into places more. And when I mean get into places, Disney is one of those places that, you know, you want to try to, you can sneak into, you can sneak cameras into places a little easier if it looks tinier. So look at this. This is an 18 to 55 on the X-T1. Uh, and this is a super tiny little setup. And this thing has almost the same range as the 16 to 55, right? 18 to 55. Um, and the aperture is variable. But where the key point to me comes in is that the optical image stabilization on these Fujinon lenses are out of this world. And this is coming from someone that's used IS on Canon L lenses, okay? I've used those when I shot weddings, and I've used VR on tons of Nikon lenses, okay? I've also used some Sony uh, image stable. I think, they, I think Sony calls theirs optical steady shot. And I've used Sony stuff. I have never in my life used an image stabilized lens as good as these Fujinon lenses. I mean, you just would not believe. So I've had this now for one day and I've been testing the crap out of it. And I shot a couple of subjects in my house with just the regular house lighting at nighttime. And at ISO 1600, I think it was giving me about a sixth of a second. Yes, not a 60th, a sixth of a second, okay? And I took a shot and I was expecting it to be very blurry because I was just trying to push the optical stabilization to its, you know, to its limits. And it was tack sharp. And so of course I cranked in on the, on the screen and I was like, okay, no way. I'm gonna have to put it on the computer. I put it on the computer, tack sharp at hundred percent at a sixth of a second. I mean, and that, then that wasn't at 18 millimeters. That was, I think at about 50 millimeters. So I don't know, this lens has been amazing me just in the past 24 hours. Um, let me tell you some other things that I've found about it. Cause I have taken both of these outside. Okay. So first off, Image stabilization, it kills it on this lens. It's amazing. Uh, that's the sole reason why I ended up ordering it because I'm going to Disney World this weekend. And at Disney World, I'm gonna get a lot of 30th, 60th, 80th of a second type shots. And I can do those handheld with, with this lens. I mean, without a doubt, if I can do a sixth of a second, I'm not even gonna worry at 30th, 60th, 80th of a second, okay? So that's that, optical stabilization, killer. Uh, let's talk about image quality and optical quality. Um, I've done some side-by-sides in Lightroom over the past 24 hours, okay? And I have found that at the widest end, okay, so it's 16 millimeters on the 16 to 55, the corners are almost flawless. It's actually, th this lens optically is beautiful. At 18 millimeters on the 18 to 55, uh, there is some vignetting and their corners are a little soft. But the second that you get to like f4.5 to f8 to f11, flawless, just flawless quality. So for landscape photography, if you're thinking about getting one of the two, I might be inclined to tell you to save the money and just get the 18 to 55. Uh, because at f8 and f11, it looks great. It looks just, it, to my eye, it looked the same as this lens at f8, f11, f5.6, anywhere in there, they looked almost identical, okay? And especially once you process them in Photoshop, you, you do your noise reduction, you add your sharpening, um, you know, there, no one's gonna be able to sit, you know, no one's gonna sit there and say, oh, yep, that was shot with the 18 to 55, it looks a little soft. It, it really didn't. I mean, it, so the, the biggest thing that I found was at 18 millimeter, you can tell that the corners are a tad soft. It's not a huge thing. I mean, it's really not that bad at all. It's not like you can tell it's like a vignette. It's just a little soft. This one is not as soft, but you are paying for a, just a teeny tiny bit better optical quality in this one. But it's nothing that I would, uh, I know as soon as I said that, I'm sure a couple people out there went, oh, that's it, I'm pausing the video, I'm not getting the 18 to 55. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. I would not be afraid at all to print large images from this lens. Of course, I would shoot it at, F5.6, F6.3, F7, F8, you know, in, in that range, at the, at, you know, of course at the lens sweet spots. But I would do that with any lens. If I know I'm gonna get a big print, I'm gonna shoot at the lens's sweet spot, F8, F11, in that range, right? So yeah, this lens is just wonderful. It's so light. Uh, I'm gonna be taking this lens everywhere in Disney World, and I'm sure I'll take this some, you know, I, I'm probably going to try to take this um, to the spots in Disney World uh, where I'm gonna, there's a couple spots in Disney World where I try to do astrophotography and try to mix that into the architecture. And so this has the 2.8 aperture. So I'll probably crank it at 2.8 ISO 3200 and, and try some astrophotography work. But honestly, this one's not gonna be bad either, especially if I'm at 18 millimeters because I can still use f2.8. So, you know, they, they both have their pros and cons. This one isn't weather sealed. That's gonna be a separate video coming up, by the way, because weather sealed gear is important, but it's not as important as you think. There's no like, 
you know, extra things inside the metal of the lens that makes it water resistant and it, it repels rain. It's just a rubber gasket by the lens mount that, it, that you know, stops moisture and rain and condensation from going into the back of the lens. But there's nothing else in the lens that makes it weather sealed. It's just a rubber gasket on the, on the outside of the mount of the lens there. So you know, it's not like they reinforce the lens from the inside out with this amazing material. So don't look too much into weather sealing. It's important that at the same time, you know, if you follow basic rules where you, know, you don't let rain just pour on your camera, even though it, you know, the XT bodies can handle it, I would never just sit there and let pouring rain just run all over my camera unless I was getting paid and had to get the shot for, you know, for it's like live, you know, life or death have to get the shot type thing. Um, yeah, so if you are in the spot that I was in where you're, you were wondering if you should go 16 to 55, 18 to 55, unless you have to have constant 2.8, I would probably go the 18 to 55. It's really impressed me. I didn't think it was going to. I honestly, when I bought this, I said, uh, what's, the, what's the return policy again? Cause you know, I'm taking this on vacation. If I don't like it, you know, I, I might return it. And uh, I, I'm gonna keep it. I'm, I, I'm 24 hours with it and I'm not even thinking about returning it. There's, I'm gonna keep it, absolutely. This is, a, this is a fantastic lens. It has impressed the heck out of me, which I find that a lot of the Fuji stuff is doing that lately. It's just impressing the heck out of me. So. Uh, yeah, if you guys are making this decision, I would probably lean towards the 18 to 55 because I do not look at this as a kit lens. It is one of the best variable aperture zooms that I've used and the absolute best, hands down, any brand I've used, the best image stabilization in a lens I have used. They claim that it is five stops and I agree. It's five stops, might even be a little more. Um, yeah, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick test before I end the video. I just have this, uh, Coca-Cola bottle cap, and I'm gonna take a shot with the X-T1, with the 18 to 55, with the optical stabilization on, and I'm gonna take a shot with the 16 to 55 2.8. Okay, I'm just gonna put this here, and we're just gonna see what shutter speed it gives me, and I'm gonna make it even lower if I have to, to where it's like a 10th, a sixth of a second, and, and I'm gonna run the pictures on screen and we'll see what happens here. So, uh, take the lens cap off, that might help. Crank the camera on, get things rocking and rolling here. All right, so let's see what we've got. We're at ISO 1600, let's go down to 800. Okay, that's giving me a 20th of a second. Let's go down, let's crank the lens to 55 millimeters. Okay, that is giving me a 30th of a second. Let's go down to ISO 400. There we go, so that's giving me a 10th of a second. So let's just do that, okay, a 10th of a second. The image stabilization is on. All right, I'm on uh, F4. ISO 400 and a tenth of a second. So, uh, by the way, when you do this, uh, breathing has a lot to do with with, it, with things too. I don't know if you've ever shot a rifle before, anyone out there, but when you shoot a, a rifle or, or any kind of gun long range, you typically wanna pull the trigger on the exhale. And so that helps with, with lenses, whether they're optically stabilized or not, because when you exhale, your body just tends to not move and shake as much. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna control my breathing. I'm gonna try to get the sharpest shot on both and we'll compare them and see you know how it turns out. I'm gonna make sure this one is at a tenth of a second as well. So here we go. Get my focus and take the shot. All right, let's see. To me, that looks just tack sharp, a tenth of a second. We'll try one more time. Take another shot. Exhale. Beautiful. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. And let's grab the X-T2 with the 16 to 55, this huge lens, all right. And that was shot at F4, so we'll crank this at F4. ISO 400, all right. Yep, 10th of a second. We'll crank it to 55 millimeters, just like we did with the other one. And everything else is set correctly, I believe. Uh, no, my exposure compensation was turned on. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got 10th of a second going. Let's try this again. Oh, whoops, I have it on continuous shooting. Let's not do that. Let's go to single shot. All right, let's see how that looks. That looks a little soft. You know, it, it, does, it doesn't look as sharp as the 18 to 55, to be honest with you. Uh, we'll, we'll do one more just like we did with the 18 to 55. All right, let's see what we got. 
That one's a little sharper, okay? So it'll, it'll be interesting. You've probably already seen the photos on screen. Uh, it'll be interesting to compare them and see, uh, you know, see what we came up with. We'll see, see which one is sharp. If they're both sharp, hey, cool. Then I own two great lenses. I'm not complaining. I, you know, of course I want the 16 to 55 to succeed just like this one will. Um, but yeah, so uh, you guys already know which one is sharp and which one is blurry, or hey, maybe they're both blurry. Maybe they're both sharp. I don't know. But um, yeah, this, this lens is just killer. So if you are considering it and you're you kind of timid about spending the 1200 to get this lens, the 18 to 55 is a fantastic option. So yeah, if you guys have any questions or need any more info about this or my decision or anything, uh, leave the questions in the comments. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos and I'll see you in the next one. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.